you might not be surprised to find out that there are actually multiple ways to solve linear regression problems. That's because this problem is so central and used in tons of machine learning applications that people have found many ways to work it. And don't worry, you don't need to know all the ways to solve linear regression, just these top two methods. So in this video, I'll show you exactly how to solve it using gradient descent which is actually how all modern neural networks and large language models are trained. Also, I'll give you some pro tips on some common mistakes so that you can avoid them and ace your next interview or exam. And if you want to get more content just like this, just subscribe to the channel to stay up to date. Okay, let's dive into the problem. So we're here in deepml.com and today we're going to solve problem number 15, linear regression using gradient descent. The last time we solved this one, 14, using the normal equation. So let's read this problem together and see how it differs from the previous version. So we need to write a Python function that performs linear regression using gradient descent. The function takes in, as before, a numpy array x, which is the features, uh, or input features, with an extra column of 1 to regress the intercept. We'll explain this in a sec. And our target is given as y. And we also get the learning rate, which we're going to need, and the number of iterations that we're going to perform optimization with. So we need to return the coefficients of the linear regression model, also in the form of a numpy array, and round our answers to four decimal places. And they say minus 0.0, .0 is valid, so don't worry. Very cool. So if you remember correctly, our input features are actually this kind of one, two, and three over here. And this extra column of one is something that we add artificially so that we can do a regression for the intercept because the intercept is something that we usually subtract. We do y minus the intercept and only then calculate the slope. If it's a higher dimension, we do the same thing. The idea is we have this free parameter called the intercept that we also want to optimize. So to do this, we just add this extra one and then we can do everything with matrix operations or over here with the gradient descent and it works much, much nicer. So that's this extra column of one. And we have a learning rate, which is how big of an optimization step we're going to do. And the number of iterations is how many optimization steps we are going to do. So before I get into the code, let's take a look a little bit more. They have this learn about the topic thing, which is very nice. And something that I always used to get confused about is the difference between the loss function and the gradient that's used in gradient descent. So these are very related concepts. The loss function is kind of the value of the error. So one way to kind of quantify how bad our model is. And the gradient is the direction in which it needs to improve. So the gradient has the number of dimensions as the number of weights that we have. Weights, biases, same thing. And the loss function is usually just a single number. Hopefully this visualization helps out a little bit. So over here we have the equation of the update rule that we're going to use in our gradient descent optimization. So what we have over here is the current weights theta in the next iteration, I mean. They're gonna be equal to the weights from the previous iteration minus the learning rate times the gradient of the loss function. And in this case, we're using mean squared error loss. And what's important to remember is that this is going to be different for every loss function. Um, and packages like PyTorch, they just take care of this all under the hood. So you don't need to remember the exact gradient expression for each loss function. So let's dive into the coding part. So we're given this input array X, which is the array of features, and it's of size M number of samples by N features. As you can see, theta is also of size n features by one. So this means that y is of size also uh, m, meaning there's a single y for each sample. This is actually not good because the way our model is going to generate predictions is by taking x matrix multiplied by theta. So this is going to be an m by n matrix multiplied by an n by one matrix, which will produce an output 
of size M by one. And Y is only of shape M. So this can produce some errors when you have broadcasting and stuff. So what we wanna do actually is add another dimension to Y. So we're going to have it be the same thing. And we just add this none over here. This way Y is going to be of the correct dimensions, M by one. Now, how do we compare Y and the predictions? So we can calculate the error as just the predictions minus Y. So this is going to be our error and our loss is going to be our error squared. So sort of squared. So here we're squaring every element, but we actually just want to take the sum because this needs to be something of size one, right? Our loss is always a scalar. And when we do backpropagation or calculate the gradient, then we get something of size theta. A more fancy way to calculate the loss is to take the predictions minus y, so this is our error term, and do a matrix multiplication which it, with itself, but take the transpose of the first part. So what's actually happening here is this error term, like we said, it's of size m by one, right? Because it's the same size, both the predictions and the y's are the same size. So the transpose is going to be a one by m matrix multiplied by an m by one matrix. And this is going to give a matrix of size one by one. So this is exactly the scalar we're looking for. Why did I write this in such a fancy term? So maybe now the gradient is going to be a little more intuitive. So the gradient, the way we calculate the gradient is we take the derivative of the first term times the second term plus the derivative of the second term times the first term. That's how we do a derivative of a product. So here, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna replace the predictions we have with what we actually used. So we did X times theta, that's how we generated our predictions. And let's see how we do the gradient. So the gradient, so the derivative of the first term with respect to theta is just this X thing over here. And it's actually X transpose. So X transpose times the second term plus the first term times the derivative of the second term, which is X only X. So as you can see, these are actually sort of the same. This is kind of the transpose of the first one, although it's not exactly a transpose, it's transpose and uh, kind of the order here is sort of flipped. So there's a, you can show it, then I'm not gonna show it here, that these two are actually exactly equal to each other, which means that I can just erase this second part and put a two over here because they're equal. So this is our gradient. And now that we have the gradient over here, what we can do is we can already start the optimization process. So now that we have our gradient, we can start optimizing. So we'll start the gradient descent process, we'll calculate the gradient, and then we update theta. So theta in each step is going to be theta minus the learning rate alpha, times the gradient and that's it so all these things above we actually didn't need them i was just mostly using them to help the explanation but i can just remove all of these things and this is actually all we need for our gradient descent uh, process i could even just copy this gradient thing over here and it'll all be in one line but one thing i want to note is when we did this thing, what we're doing is we're actually summing over all the samples. So this is going to depend on how many samples we have in each batch. And this is not very good if the number of samples might change in different batches. So what we usually do is we divide by the number of samples because we're doing mean squared error. That's gonna be our loss function. So we want this to be the mean, not the sum. And now we're really done. So two divided by the, uh, the number of samples times X transpose times our error term. And then we update data in this way. Now, one thing that's currently an issue in uh, deepml.com is they have a little mistake over here that I'll talk with them that instead of two, they accidentally put a one over here but hopefully this won't be an issue when you watch the video. Let's run the tests and we'll see if they work. And they do. Very nice. So again, the main takeaways here 
are how we calculate the gradient that's specific for mean squared error loss. Don't forget to divide by the number of samples. This one over here is actually wrong. What the correct expression should have a two over here. So when you implement it, do it with a two. And one last thing that sometimes people ask is what would happen if we do plus instead of minus. So here we're doing gradient descent, meaning we're trying to go down in the loss function. We're trying to minimize the error. And if you accidentally put a plus over here, you're doing the opposite. You're trying to maximize the error. You're doing gradient ascent. So this is usually not desirable unless you have a very specific loss function. Always we want to try to minimize the error. So this should have a minus. Very cool. And that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a like and check out this next one where we take a deeper dive into machine learning coding problems.